And uh, thank you all for being here today. Um, Serena asked me to uh, quickly introduce what is AURAC. AURAC is a, a research center based in Bolzano. Uh, it has a lot of institutes with different focuses, for example, renewal in, uh, re um, renewable energy, but also uh, linguists and uh, uh, we as a center of institute for biomedicine. Uh, at the Institute for Biomedicine, we are around uh, um, 80 people uh, between researcher and uh, uh, administrative people. And in the researcher, in research, we have, let's say, a big bunch of people working on data analysis in a big uh, population study with, uh, that's called CRIS study. It's a population study based in Sutirol. And also we have the wet lab. In the wet lab, I am leading actually the biology of cardiac health and disease group. And today I am actually presenting our work in progress. Uh, because I would say, as you say he, as you can see here, it's a work in progress based on the community on trying to set up a communication model uh, between heart cells and uh, uh, autonomic nervous system cells. Why is that? Well, definitely because heart and uh, um, uh, brain communicate, but also because uh, there in URAC, as I said, I'm leading the biology of cardiac health and disease group, but there are also groups um, that uh, in the past mainly worked in the, with the uh, nervous system, especially in the field of uh, uh, Parkinson disease and other neurodegenerative disease. So we said, well, the connection uh, between these two organs is important. <laughs> And we have the possibility to try and put them together based on our expertise. So we tried and developed this system. So uh, as I said, uh, why uh, it's important to study and try to mimic the connection between heart and brain, because the, autonom the, the, the autonomous nervous system, uh, well, as you know, is actually involved in controlling heart function during stress, but not only during stress, actually the neurogenic control of the heart uh, spans also from housekeeping function in resting condition to the uh, fight or flight response, which is much more intense. Uh, in terms of what heart does, uh, what brain does on the heart, actually brain and the autonomic nervous system controls uh, heart rate, conduction velocity, force of contraction and relaxation mainly in terms of physiology. So to do, to do so, to do such, uh, let's say, a sophisticated function, actually, um, there are these uh, uh, ganglia, uh, cervical and thoracic um, ganglia that are on the sympathetic nervous system and the parasympathetic ganglia that are based on the heart, that are located on the heart, and they receive inputs from uh, the uh, peripheral afferents, which are mechanical, metabolic and chemical parameters, but also from central and so from that, they transmit information on the physiological state of the body and on emotion. So what are the effector uh, neurons of the system? Those are the so-called motor neurons, which are not exactly called motor neurons for the autonomic nervous system, but let's call it easily this way. And those innervate the heart and uh, those neurons that actually innervate the heart are uh, coupled to the uh, conducting system of the heart. So the um, uh, atrioventricular node, the sinoatrial node, the his bundle, in, in case of sympathetic and parasympathetic um, nervous system. And actually uh, working cardiomyocytes receive uh, inputs uh, only or mainly from sympathetic um, uh, autonomous nervous system. So it is known that the dysregulation of the autonomic nervous system due to aging or to, 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 to stress or to other causes actually contributes to uh, cardiac and cardiovascular pathologies. So, uh, for example, we are talking about hypertension, ischemic heart disease, and more related to our interest to arrhythmias and, cardiac, and, and sudden cardiac death. And uh, in fact, there are many papers actually uh, explaining the role of autonomous nervous system in arrhythmias, sudden cardiac death, in also um, inherited cardiomyopathies like uh, uh, 
sorry, like arrhythmogenic uh, cardiomyopathy. And it's also known that uh, autonomic nervous system activity is altered in idiopathic dilated cardiomyopathy and hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Um, it's also true that uh, the, the, the opposite is also true. So there are cardiac manifestations such as orthostatic hypotension or, for example, the inability to um, alter heart rate in response to increased activity like exercise or exercise intolerance or increased arrhythmias in case of a neurological disorder. And this has been described in synucleinopathies uh, like uh, Parkinson's disease, and also, for example, Parkinson's disease has been associated with uh, an increased atrial fibrillation rate and uh, cardiac abnormalities, also arrhythmias, have been described in Parkinson's disease and Parkinsonism. So, actually, uh, we have this, uh, uh, let's say, evidence, this round evidence of uh, this important connection of heart and brain in uh, um, disease, but actually we lack uh, in vitro model uh, to, to, to study this kind of system. And uh, also it's very difficult to study these details of the interaction between heart and brain in vivo in humans. So these have actually hindered the research into the molecular mechanisms be behind the altered neuron cardiomyocytes interaction that we can observe in such a disease as we have described so far. And so also this has hampered so far the development of new uh, treatment regimens. So uh, the aim of our work so far has been to try and set up a functional co-culture system, uh, all human, based on IPS-derived cardiomyocytes and IPS-derived sympathetic neurons. Uh, to do so. Uh, so before going into the methods and what we have set up so far, I just would like to point uh, uh, and to briefly explain and to remind you how the uh, sympathetic signal transmission actually goes and the sympathetic because actually, as I said before, uh, um, the sympathetic neurons are the neurons that goes in touch directly with the working my my uh, myocardium and the cardiac myocytes that we are deriving from, IP from IPS cells are uh, working cardiomyocytes, so are mainly ventricular cardiomyocytes. So this is the reason why we started, uh, we decided to start investigating this uh, connection. So how they work. So at the level of the ganglia, there is the connect. Sorry, there is the connection uh, between the preganglionic neurons and the postganglionic neurons. And here, the connection is based on acetylcholine. Acetylcholine actually binds to the um, channels to the acetylcholine re receptor that that uh, that are channels. And once the channels, after the uh, binding to the ligand, are open, um, uh, this determines that actually the postsynaptic neuron is activated. And so at the other end, it releases noradrenaline and noradrenaline actually activates the beta adrenergic re receptor on the cardiomyocytes. And the beta adrenergic receptor are actually coupled to second messengers. And more in detail, again, on this sympathetic signal transmission, is uh, um, uh, important to uh, remind that actually the real impact and the real amount of neurons that are um, in the working my myocardium has been so far really underestimated. It's now demonstrated that actually the working myocardium is densely innervated by sympathetic neurons. And uh, this, uh, the, the, the processes of sympathetic neurons actually lay on cardiomyocytes and establish multiple um, neurocardiac contacts. And uh, here in this, uh, let's say, varicosity, uh, the neurotransmitter is released. And uh, uh, those formation here of the neurons, these processes of the neurons are called um, per lace uh, structure. Uh, so this is actually uh, a, um, a picture uh, of a rodent uh, a heart, but it's actually um, estimated that uh, the, 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 uh, the organization is the same also in the human myocardium.
So in terms of methods, uh, what we have done is actually to uh, set up the cardiomyogenic differentiation and the neuronal differentiation into sympathetic neurons. So uh, actually the cardiomyogenic differentiation is actually a standard one. It's a protocol based on um, a commercial kit. Um, so, well, there are diff I, I, I don't go into the details. In any case, there is a change of medium. And then uh, um, uh, uh, after this uh, treatment of the cells, actually cells uh, start uh, beating spontaneously. And when the beatings appear after that, um, the, the, the cardiomyocytes are purified so that at the end, we uh, end up uh, with a culture that uh, has, uh, let's say, from... 75 to 90 percent of cardiomyocytes impurity, while the neuronal differentiation actually also here is based on change on different medium with different neurogenic factors. And also here at the end, we should have um, uh, orthosympathetic neurons. Uh, you can see here an image of how the neurons look like in differentiation. So it's really evident the formation of axons, bundles between islet of, uh, um, uh, let's say, of, of, of uh, um, agglomerates in which the soma of the neurons is, uh, is present. So um, in terms of what we have done to establish the co-culture, we started the monoculture differentiation and uh, uh, after uh, 30 days of cardiac and neuronal differentiation, we plated the, uh, the cells in the two separated chamber of a silicon, in, of a silicon insert. And uh, actually we allow the cells to settle there. And uh, um, at day 30, we had the possibility to remove the silicon insert so that a gap between the two, the two population was formed. And uh, uh, after 10 days of this gap removal, we could observe the formation of axons that were projecting from the neurons towards the cardiac myocytes. Uh, here uh, you can see this system that is a system that we use to record the electrical activities of neurons and cardiomyocytes because of course they are both characterized by the possibility of showing an electrical activity. This is a multi, sorry, this is a multi-electrode array platform. Uh, it is uh, equipped with a neuronal module that could measure the activity, so the spike of the neurons, and this responds to the question whether the neurons are functional or not, and also could respond to the uh, to uh, to the question: Are they, the, the the neurons firing uh, um, in a synchronous way, so that to understand whether the synapses are functional? And the cardiac module actually could allow the detection of the bit the, of the bit frequency, which is what we have most used for this characterization and the characterization that you will see afterwards. But we could also record the action potential shape or other characteristic of the signals like the field potential duration and the occurrence of arrhythmias. And here you can see how these electrodes in a plate look like. And here uh, I. I, I mean, I think it's visible. You can see an example of aquaculture uh, right after the insert removal. So here you can see the gap between the two, the two cell population. And here you can see the neurons. Well, here it's not possible to actually appreciate the fact that those are neurons and those are cardiomyocytes. But believe me, yes, those are neurons and those are cardiomyocytes. And after seven days, right after the removal of the insert, uh, it's possible to see that actually there are here axons that are projecting from the uh, neurons to the, to the cardiomyocytes. Um, so actually we didn't, uh, well, before actually characterizing the, the, uh, the co-culture, we uh, decided to, let's say, have a, a characterization of the two monocultures alone. Well, the characterization of the cardiomyocytes were quite easy because, uh, as I told you, uh, we have we are quite experienced in the uh, cardiomyocytes characterization. So we simply 
had uh, um, the uh, immunofluorescence showing that those cells are kind of, as I told you before, uh, the, the, the culture is quite pure. So we have mainly cardiomyocytes in the, in the, in the culture. And uh, those are th 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 those have evident sarcomeres, uh, as evident by the expression uh, of troponin I and alpha actin in organism organized in, sar in striated sarcomeres. And actually, those cardiomyocytes are functional. Here you can see the recording with the MEA system. This is the baseline of a, a spontaneous heart of a spontaneous cardiomyocytes beating, and you can see that after the administration of isoproterenol, as expected, uh, isoproterenol actually stimulates the beta-adrenergic receptor. So you can see an increase in the, beat, in the beating rate of the cells. And uh, actually with propanolol, it was possible to see, as expected, a, a, a tendency to the decrease in the beats of, uh, of those cardiomyocytes. Well, this is not significant probably because we still have to increase uh, the, the, the numerosity of the experiment, but as you can see here, actually the beating rate is is significantly decreased, is, is, is evidently decreased, I would say. Uh, for uh, IPS derived sympathetic neurons, well, the, the characterization of the monoculture is still open uh, because uh, uh, it's not that easy to be fully 100% sure that we are really dealing with uh, uh, sympathetic neurons and not with other type of neurons. There are many neurons that we can uh, have in culture. So uh, in any case, we started with the um, uh, characterization of some uh, um, enzymes that are actually only expressed uh, in, uh, in neurons that are on the sympathetic lineage. And one of these is... Uh, um, the, uh, um, the tyrosine uh, monooxygenase or TH, which is actually involved in the um, formation of L-DOPA from tyrosine. And TH is actually uh, an enzyme that is uh, involved in the um, biosynthesis of the biosyn the biosynthesis of noradrenaline. And here you can see that uh, in those neurons, uh, um, there is an increase in the expression of TH um, if we consider neurons or precursors of neurons at day 12 and at day 30. And also this is evident in gene expression, but also in Western blot analysis, there is this significant increase in the expression of TH. TH is also evident here in red. You can see neurons at day 30 that actually express TH. Not all the neurons uh, express TH. MAP2 is a panneuronal uh, marker. And so you can see that there are also neurons that are not TH positive as expected. And uh, here you can see, I don't know how much is evident, uh, but there are neurons that are red. And those neurons are actually positive for DDH, which is the dopamine beta hydroxylase that actually converts dopamine into noradrenaline. So is only present, should be only present in uh, adrenergic and noradrenergic neurons. Uh, and in terms of activity, uh, actually our, our neurons are functional. So you can see here that at uh, um, day 30, actually uh, there is uh, some activity uh, and actually this activity increases a lot from day 30 to day 40. So here, here each single line is a spike, is an action potential of the neurons. And you can see here when you have these uh, blue uh, signals that actually neurons are bursting, so are actually firing um, with action potential that are very, very uh, close one to the other. And so you can see here that actually the firing rate and the burst frequency is actually uh, maximized at day 40 of differentiation. So this is the reason why in the culture we put uh, uh, neurons, in the co-culture we put neurons that are at day 40 of differentiation. So uh, now the co-culture. Uh, so here you can see how actually um, the silicon insert looks like in a, in, a, in, a, in a plate. And you can see here, what is happening uh, during the, the co-culture. This is at five, day, ten, ten, five days, 10 days, and 20 days. So as I said, the um, axons are sprouting. And 
here you can see a time lapse. Oops. Uh, okay. So here you can see actually at the beginning of the uh, of the connection that there are um, those axons that are sprouting and going uh, to the uh, and forming the connection to the cardiomyocytes that are at the other side of the gap. And here you can see also some characterization via immunofluorescence. Uh, neurons are uh, neurons are red, uh, marked with TH, and uh, uh, cardiomyocytes are green, marked with uh, uh, alpha actinin. So you can see actually that definitely um, neurons have migrated towards cardiomyocytes, and there are a lot of connections that are established with cardiomyocytes. And here you can see also the reconstruction of uh, another type of uh, marker. Uh, in green, always, always alpha actinin for the cardiomyocytes. And in red, you can see synapsin 1, which is a presynaptic, pre presynaptic, thank you, um, a presynaptic marker. And uh, you can see that actually this presynaptic marker is seem at least to be organized in this discrete varicosity as uh, I have uh, uh, described before. So we think, even though we are not yet fully sure, but we think that might be that those are resembling uh, this uh, uh, perlace morphology that I was mentioning before. Um, so, in terms of the characterization, the molecular characterization of the cultures, you can see that actually, uh, well, the expression of the TH, uh, uh, the, the, let's say the comparison of the TH expression between monoculture and cocultural actually gives no difference. So, no difference in TH expression in the two conditions, no difference in the difference in the DBH expression. No difference in the FOX2B. FOX2B is a transcription factor that, will, uh, that actually uh, should, be, should mark the uh, sympathetic neurons at early stages of differentiation. So it doesn't seem that actually the co-culture changes the expression of these three markers in the neurons. But actually, there is a tendency in the increase of beta-adrenergic receptor in, cardio, in, cardio, in cardiac myocytes that are co-culture compared to those that are in culture alone. Here you can see that actually beta adrenergic receptors are those dots in red and seem to be actually expressed in the uh, cardiomyocytes. Um, functional characterization of actually the co-culture. So as you can see here, uh, the bit rate of the spontaneous bit rate of cardiomyocytes actually seems not to change in the presence uh, uh, of, uh, um, uh, of connection with neurons. So actually, the basal beating rate uh, um, at seven days of co-culture and at the beginning of co-culture seems not to be, to be altered. But actually, uh, we try to uh, further characterize the functional aspects of this co-culture using drug administration to understand better what was going on. So actually we treated cells with nicotine and nicotine is actually an activator of the um, acetylcholine receptor of the um, noradrenergic neuron. So as I explained before, actually uh, in the presence of nicotine, uh, the um, postganglionic new neuron is depolarized and released noradrenaline. And this should, uh, if the uh, connection is functional, this should bring to an activation of the cardiac myocytes. And actually, this is what observed because in the presence of nicotine, the uh, beating rate of cardiomyocytes actually significantly increased. Uh, <laughs> Adding alpha bulgurotoxin, which is actually a blocker of the acetylcholine receptor, um, determined actually uh, um, the um, 
didn't actually cause the increase, the expected increase in the beating rate of cardiomyocytes. So you can see here the co-culture is actually similar to what uh, is obtained treating the cells with bungarotoxin alone or with bungarotoxin and nicotine. So no changes in the beating rate. So this means that actually the increase of uh, the beating rate observed in the cardiomyocytes is due to the uh, stimulation of neurons. And you can also see that because uh, uh, in the um, cardiomyocyte monoculture, the nicotine didn't have any effect. Uh, also, we treated cells with uh, um, uh, isoproterenol. Uh, I showed you before that is a, an agonist of the beta adrenergic receptor. So in the presence of isoproterenol, actually the um, beating rate of the cardiomyocyte uh, book culture increased. And this increase was uh, um, uh, actually the, the increase didn't happen in the presence of propanolol which is a blocker of the uh, beta-adrenergic receptor. Another important thing that we observed is that even though the um, basal frequency and the, let's say, yes, the, the, the spontaneous frequency of cardiac myocytes in co-culture didn't change, actually the beta amplitude uh, of their, um, their beta amplitude actually was significantly increased in the presence of neurons. So, this actually makes uh, us think uh, that uh, um, there is um, a constant stimulation of beta adrenergic receptor provided by the neurons that actually end up in an uh, increased uh, contractility of the, cardi of the cardiac myocytes. Uh, in terms of what happens uh, functionally to neurons in the co-culture, we can see that uh, there is an increase in the firing rate of the, of the neurons in co-culture, but no significant increase in the burst uh, frequency. Actually, this is something that we still have to uh, better characterize uh, the, the part, let's say, of the, of the neurons. Uh, last but not least, we also would like to, uh, we, we, we are trying to um, better understand uh, if the synapses are functional so far, uh, let's say what we have seen so far makes, uh, makes us thinking that the synapses are working and they are, are working functionally, but to prove that with another method, we actually have used this uh, analog of the norepinephrine um, and actually this analog is actually taken by the norepinephrine transport into the cells and this is uh, um, immunolabeled, so it is green. And actually, it is, uh, um, um, it is uptaken into the synaptic vesicle and then released when there is a stimulation. So here, it seems that actually this, uh, um, this marker has been taken into the synaptic vesicle that are present in the neurons. The neurons are marked in red with this uh, uh, specific neurofloor marker. And for example, here you can see in the 3D uh, reconstruction that actually those synaptic vesicles are really, I mean, those dots are really inside the cells, not out outside as a specific marker. Uh, now, what we are doing is try to see whether after the treatment with nicotine, we can see actually the release and so a decrease in, in the signal of the synaptic vesicles in the cells. But those experiments are actually ongoing. So, yes, uh, those are the conclusion of uh, actually our, our system. Uh, we have actually uh, developed a co-culture system that is based on human IPS-derived cardiomyocytes and sympathetic neurons. And uh, we have demonstrated that sympathetic neurons and cardiomyocytes are functionally coupled. Uh, both sympathetic neurons and cardiomyocytes respond to pharmacological stimulation. Uh, electrical activity of neurons and cardiomyocytes can be independently recorded in this system. And actually, the next step are on the use of this system for disease modeling. So to see and to analyze whether the connection between uh, um, heart and brain or between uh, cardiomyocytes and sympathetic neurons uh, is altered in uh, 
uh, different type of disease using patient derived uh, neurons and cardiomyocytes. And uh, let me thank the people that actually have made uh, all the work. So uh, Jada uh, actually started working on that for her PhD. Uh, Laura, that you know, uh, have contributed to the work. And now also Giovanna is working on that. Giovanna is doing a, a PhD in collaboration with the University of Bolzano. And she's also trying to simulate neurons and cardiomyocytes using polymers that are sensitive to the light. And I thank you for your attention.